Yay! All right. Hello, everyone. This is our quick news topic for the day. Today, we're taking a look at an article about the Ryzen 7 4700G, talking about how it can match the performance of the 3000X while using way less power. So basically, what's going on here is the fact that these new Ryzen APUs, which are going to come out, which are going to be based on like Ryzen 3, which if you haven't heard already, when in the 3200G and the 3400G release, those are basically based on second gen Ryzen, but they use the third gen name. Kind of confusing, but that's normally how they're set up. So this one will be based on the 3000 series, but we'll have the 4000 name. So keep that in mind, APUs are basically always a generation behind. But anyways, this is gonna be an eight core 16 threaded CPU that's gonna come with APU graphics, which Jackson and I talked about this before when we first heard about this. I think these would be pretty awesome for things like video editing PCs who don't need to get like dedicated graphics cards. Um, and the power consumption here showing it could come in at 65 watts compared to 95 watts of the 3000X Jeez. is actually very impressive. <clears throat> Um, I'm trying, like, these builds would be great for video editing. These builds would be great for, I don't know. Like I mean, they're, many... they're honestly just great for laptops and yeah. stuff. Like, when you look at all the high-end laptops out there that aren't directly, um, you know, gaming-oriented, they usually don't come with a discrete graphics or They just come with, like, a really high-end i7, and they're asking, like, $1,000. And I'm always sitting there thinking, man, that seems like a lot of money for something that i mean it's gonna have trouble running a freaking internet game or anything like that i'm like you know everybody plays the game from time to time so with these type of processors with the you know integrated graphics amd is really good at it they kind of hit the head on the nail so I, I think that you can even do some light gaming on them for sure yeah i'd be very interested to see how much more performance you get i know normally these cpus are bottlenecked by the actual vega gpu that's on there not really the cpu because we've upgraded many systems with graphics cards on those cpus and they work perfectly fine so oh, they're yeah. a great starting point this could be even a better starting point if the price is right because imagine getting this cpu with integrated graphics run it for a while maybe use it for work and then at some point you upgrade it with a <coughs> graphics card you know it'd be great um it'd be my first choice if it was 200 if it was 200 dollars, that'd be crazy i don't know if it would be that cheap but if it is, I mean, let's think about what's that $200. 3,800 X isn't even. 3,800 X is, <laughs> I think like 300 something bucks. I'd be really surprised if it yeah. was $200. If it was $200, that would tell you that fourth gen stuff is probably going to be really high core count. If the eight core ones are like 200 bucks, eh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically rumors right now are they were supposed to release very soon and that's what they heard back in May. So ideally it might come out this month. If it does, you know, we'll definitely be pushing to get one for a build. Um, but yeah, this is very, very cool to see that AMD is just kind of toppling on top of themselves. They're really not fighting with Intel at this point. They're kind of just fighting with themselves and making some pretty awesome stuff. So pretty excited to try these out. So, uh, Ted Tide, I, I see where you're coming from, by the way, I'm sorry for like butchering your name, but it's one of those things where every time a new console comes out people say this exact thing yeah um there's just there is a lot of overhead um with, with making consoles that a lot of people do not think about at all mm -hmm. and one of the biggest things is that these companies they don't even make money on their consoles most of the time because they literally they rely on making money on the games and the companies you know making contracts with them to you know design a game on their platform so it's one of those things where they get you get really good deals on these consoles because of that, but at the same time, I mean, look at how long a console usually lasts you and how long they're actually supported. It's usually a couple of years. I mean, and also the new consoles, they're running new stuff that is going to be released on PC. Also, they're using the new AMD GPUs and some new Ryzen stuff in the consoles that will be released to PC soon. And the prices will probably be roughly the same as what they are on that. So you could build an equivalent PC. Uh, probably there'll probably be like a small window where the uh, PlayStation will be out and it's like best of the best, maybe. But like at the end of the day, like you're probably eventually going to get that hardware trickle down to the PC market. So you can build the exact same I mean, thing. And there's a reason they do that. They literally put this stuff that's unreleased in the consoles first because I hate to say it, but nobody's going to want to buy those consoles if you can build a PC that's the exact same price. That's why there's so many videos on console killer and whatnot. Yeah. So AMD and Intel, like these companies literally do these builds before they release their stuff to the public um you know to be able to build it themselves just so that they have the exclusivity for the first few weeks that the consoles are out so that everybody goes out there and buys them and then look at a couple weeks later once the pc stuff comes out their sales drop way down you know what i mean that's just how it goes it's interesting but yeah that's uh, it's gonna be interesting when they come out i mean i wouldn't be surprised if there are um 
lot of people who are interested in the consoles when they come out. I mean, hey, make content for us. We can try to figure out what kind of PC would be somewhat equivalent and figure out what kind of offering you could go with. But I mean, we're always going to start with PC. Let's be honest here, unless these consoles turn into literally open source PCs, which I wouldn't be surprised at some point they become way more PC. Like they're already starting to be a lot like PCs the way they use their hardware and stuff. So eh, we'll see. We'll see what they're all about when they come out.